You know, I, I've had a wonderful life. I think I was kind of a stand in. She never had children. Her best friend was my mom. And uh, she uh, often would say after she'd been really naughty and brought me something I shouldn't have, she'd say, Ah, oh, Jane, come on. When he grows up, he's going to like me better. You know, it was a sort of a wave going on. Remember, we're living, we're living on Washington Square West. On yeah. Sundays, you are awakened by congas. And yeah. that was the beginning of the, the uh, angry mob <laughs> was trying to make the bluegrass guy stop. My dad often said, I, I can't believe it. He never, he, he always lands on his feet. Mm. And that was the most backhanded compliment because I couldn't please him as a student uh, or any of those uh, kind of ways that the traditional Italian male <laughs> shows a <laughs> Garner's approval. So uh, what they're referring to is uh, a particularly uh, wonderful, in some ways, basket house called Charlie Washburn's Third Side that I played and uh, I would always have the uh, latter life jokes uh, with Richie Havens mm. uh, because Richie would come in to these, these uh, basket houses and just put out this energy and sweat and, and just tear that guitar up. And now... <laughs> You know, remember, nobody's, nobody knows anybody. Yeah. And now, you know, come on, Sebastian, come up with something. There was a certain confidence born of the combination of Eric Jacobson, Zalianovsky, he was just mounting. Steve Boone suddenly gives us a kind of a Fritz Richmond-like foundation that we mm -hmm. really appreciate. Joe Butler provides background vocals that we really didn't have. And uh, so, so it was a mounting kind of confidence. I, I, but certainly every time, and we were turned down by every record company hmm. in new york that eric jacobson could get to yeah, yeah so so and every time that he'd have to deliver the news that i mean sometimes it was do you believe in magic that the guys were turning down and we would always say see what of course they don't get it you know they yeah, they yeah. Want, yeah. They moved the Philadelphia boys. They they want a whole other thing. So but so yeah, that was how we uh, showed our little overconfident selves. Our game was we want to sound like a different band mm -hmm. every single, and that was spoken in our little little toy meeting. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, very often. I, I don't know if I'm that creative to uh, come up with that stuff uh, <laughs> without a stimulus. I'm gonna have to let the dogs out. You know, that was probably the first complete song that I ever wrote huh. uh, and that came out of real life as well as anything else
Uh, so that came about from a conversation <coughs> that I had with uh, Bob Cavallo, our manager at the time, still a friend, mm -hmm. uh, who uh, I think he and I were both speculating about what what are our kids going to think of where they're landing, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and uh, it was a, a just a complete, uh, uh, in a kind of a, sometimes you suddenly see a song open up like, here's the whole three minutes, boom. And that was one of those kind of songs that just, and I don't know, it came out very fast. The basic track was, laid down and the and then the orchestra I mean was there already I mean there was no there was only to get a certain kind of separation and be able to play drums in the same room you're recording violins and so on right. but other than that it was all that was one day's work it was a wonderful moment I wish it could last forever, and it does in the hearts of the people that were really involved, uh, and it doesn't <laughs> in yeah. a lot of people that followed. I really have a hard time imagining it. Uh, you know, there were things like guys with ears uh, that, that were so vital. Uh, you know, whether it was somebody that was going to pay off a DJ, it, it, yeah, they are, but they knew it was a good idea is why. Uh, so I, I, I'm still friends with some of the criminals that, that began uh, yeah, yeah. That our careers. I was hurt when he pulled back so far that I couldn't call him or just say hi. And I know that it was because to me, to him, I represented the threat of work. And he didn't like the Italian work ethic at all that me and Felix Papalardi were presenting to him at the time. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, I think it was a wonderful combination while, while we had that uh, yeah. going. Um, money uh, came more into it and, and created more of a different, uh, <laughs> a different demand. Um, the, uh, uh, the music business exploded in such a way. I mean, I, I remember the moment when I think it was, uh, it was either Peter Frampton's first album or was it Frampton Comes Alive mm -hmm. and that was the first platinum album yeah and I just remember how all of us sort of 60s guys were going wow <laughs> the, we, were, we were clawing and fighting for that gold Well, let's see, of course, the, you know, how, how about that Woodstock? What was that like? Is kind of where do I start kind of a question. And so I am, I am tired. And I think I've answered it as accurately and fully as I can. So there is a moment of kind of, gee, couldn't you have researched this a little better when I, mm -hmm. I hear that same question coming at me? I can't say that, that, that it's one single thing. Uh, some of those old jug band tunes with the wonderful wheezy harmonica or, mm. or that lyrical mandolin that Yank Racial played. Uh, they, they have their own reason for being and, and being wonderful. And it isn't all the lyric or the melody. It's a, sure. it's a cumulative thing. Uh, and that's marvelous. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, those albums, <coughs> those albums that uh, Phil Spector was making with the Ronettes, mm -hmm. uh, 
to me, that that was something singular, the same way that hearing the staple singers uh, in their first uh, uncloudy day and uh, those first couple of albums that we folks in Washington Square became aware of. I've been listening to Eddie Deal, a wonderful guitarist, jazz guitarist, and and also a, a miraculous fret man. Let's see, uh, Catherine's been listening to the Chai Lights, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the uh, let's see what else. Uh, Harry Hosono has been on the on the machine a lot. Hosono San is is a really unique guy who sometimes calls himself Harry the Crown and mm -hmm. uh, he was a kind of uh, the Japanese 60s guys uh, and and so he and I are I think almost the same age and uh, he he did a whole disco phase as Yellow Magic Orchestra and uh, a very creative guy. summer in the city we we had a, a pretty good version but it was pretty good as compared to the hit which is a fantastic moment mm -hmm. of four of three and a half minutes or whatever it is uh so that got nixed um a, a, a four eyes because me and arlen loved playing it um mm -hmm. A lot of those songs really the the choice came about very naturally because we'd be sitting down two guitarists face to face and 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 coming up with things that occasionally would actually be the tracks that you hear mostly though when we were working with four people it was live. We, we were able to work live. And the, I mean, I, I really, uh, I'm, I'm thankful to the heavens that the, the sequence happened, that we were actually done with those 14 tunes. Uh, and then the only thing to do was finish, which was a thing that Arlen and I individually both uh, were frequently asked to do here. Would you just put your harmonica on this song, or would you just add that wonderful Telecaster thing you do? And and you know that could happen in our respective. It's not a home studio as much as a studio that's right nearby for mm -hmm. both. Mm -hmm. We started saying, this is just going to be uh, a, a, an instrumental album. And then, oh, I don't know, I think Loving You, we were cutting it. And uh, he said, why don't you sing it once? Oh, OK, well, we sing it. Hey, that's sort of better. OK. Then there were a few more that happened the same way. Okay. So so it was it was a progressive a decision. We didn't decide that we do it one way or another. I know there's a few that I I really I have to get Arlen to to play because it would uh, would definitely add to it. 